WatchOS 9 is finally here. It's packing some seriously interesting upgrades. It won't just be the software on all Apple Watches now, it will also be the software on the Apple Watch Series 8. Let's get right into it, here's what's new. First up, there's new ways to personalize the watch. There's four new faces. The first one is called Luna, which shows both the Gregorian and cultural calendar at the same time. I might find this interesting in the month of Ramadan where I'd be interested to see the Gregorian calendar with the Islamic calendar at the same time. The second watch face is called Playtime. This is a bit more of a fun, creative, dynamic, artsy kind of face. Also pretty cool. But my favorite watch face is called Metropolitan. This is a classic watch face where when you spin the digital crown, it changes the size of the numbers on the face. The last watch face is called Astronomy. This has been revamped to include a star map and real-time cloud coverage on the watch face. That's also a really nice touch. Not that I'm ever gonna use that information, but it's just, it's just cool to know that it's there. While we're talking about watch faces, there are also some complications that have been enhanced, but an exciting new feature that I can't wait to use is focus modes. When you enter a focus mode, it updates all of your iOS devices automatically. And on the Apple Watch now, it will change the watch face that correlates to that particular focus mode. So you could have a focus mode for working out and then have a workout face, or you could have a focus mode for doing work and then it has just lots of very work specific complications on there instead. But where things really start to get interesting is in the revamped sleep app. For the first time, the Apple Watch can measure which sleep stage you're in rather than just how long you're spending in bed or your heart rate or your respiratory rate. This has been something which other smartwatches have been able to do for a little while now. It has been a criticism of the Apple Watch. So I'm really glad to have Apple finally take this quite seriously, especially as they're embarking on this major, major study to make sure that they get this feature right. When Apple do something, they usually do it very, very well. So I trust that the sleep feature on the Apple Watch, if it's not perfect right away in the future, at some point in time, it should be. Fingers crossed. Next up, and most relevant to me is productivity features. So there are four upgrades to productivity, which I got from WWDC. The first one is the updated calendar app. It now lets you create events, but it also shows you a week view. So you can see what's coming up in the week and you can like drill down into the different meetings you have in the day. This is great because I work a full-time job as well as doing YouTube on the side. So I often need to juggle multiple calendars and I need to see all the meetings I have in the week. The next thing is that notifications no longer take up the entire screen. They only take up a small banner at the top. This is great because when I'm using the watch and I'm receiving a text message from someone, it's not always just one text message. It's like a string of eight text messages and it'll be like, takes up the screen, I've got to swipe up, swipe up, swipe up. So it's great that it doesn't take up the entire screen. Next up is the Reminders app. This has been enhanced. Finally, we can now edit and add details to reminders directly in the Apple Watch. In the past, I could only mark things as completed or not completed, whereas now I can actually edit the details, which is great because that's the kind of functionality I need. I don't want to take out my iPhone every time. So something else which I can classify as a productivity feature is that apps that are actively in use are now promoted over the rest of the apps in the redesigned doc. I don't know exactly what this means, but I'd be interested to see how this works in practice, especially because right now I use the list view for my apps. And even then it can still be a bit annoying to find things alphabetically, like Spotify is right at the bottom of the list. I'd be interested to see how this redesigned doc works. The workout app has been redesigned and enhanced to add lots of new features. The biggest feature which stood out to me was the introduction of heart rate zones. This is another way to measure your workout intensity by seeing what kind of zone your heart rate is and it's entirely individual and specific to you based on your age, your weight, etc, etc. There's also a new custom workouts feature where you can build a training plan with work and rest intervals. Now you get alerts for pace, power, heart rate and cadence but also you get a metric for cardio recovery. That's really interesting. I know the Nike running app did this before but it's great to see Apple now introduce this natively as part of the OS. On the note of heart rate zone, something which I noticed in WWDC that stood out to me was that you could see your current heart rate zone but then you could also compare it to that same workout you did a week ago two weeks ago and see if you're in the same zone as you were before for instance i could be like on the uphill part of my normal run and i can notice that i'm in heart rate zone two rather than three so maybe i can push myself a little bit further so i really like that feature and it's something that's really cool to see in real time there's a new multi-sport workout type for triathletes where the apple watch automatically switches between running and swimming and cycling based upon the sensors it has on the watch. Here's another interesting one that I really didn't expect. Apple have also launched a medications app. Now, I know there's a bunch of iPhone apps that do this really well, but it's great to see Apple take that to the Apple Watch and have it as its own standalone app. In my opinion, it brings us one step closer to having the Apple Watch as a new primary device. Still think we're not quite there, but we're taking steps in the right direction. This app makes it easy for users to conveniently and discreetly track medications anytime, anywhere. You can set up schedules, lists, reminders, and information 
all in the app. I don't actually take any other supplements apart from vitamin D, but I know that this is gonna be super useful for people who have to take multiple supplements and medications throughout the day, every single day. Next up, we have running metrics. Typically, I would measure the heart rate and the cadence for my runs, but now you can also measure a bunch of different things, including stride length, ground contact time, and vertical oscillation. That is really cool. It feels like your Apple Watch is becoming your personal coach when it gets this kind of data and you can sort of take it apart and improve your runs. Next up, we also have some swimming features. Kickboard detection has been added in the workout app for swimming. What I found really interesting is that users can now track their efficiency with a swolf score. I didn't actually know what a swolf score was, but the basic idea of a swolf score is that the fewer strokes you take and the less time you take in the water, the more efficient you are in the water and you want to try and get this score as low as possible. It's another nice metric to be able to compare yourself against and it also shows improvement over time. So that's great for people who swim. What else is new? There's a bunch of other features that don't really neatly categorize into the bits up above. There's a new AFib history feature. So if you're someone that suffers from AFib, it's no longer just a test, which is a snapshot in time, which you would ordinarily do the, through the ECG app. Instead, the Apple Watch is measuring AFib over a longer period of time so you can identify trends and how long you're in AFib for and if any of your lifestyle changes are affected that etc 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 apple fitness plus now shows stats from the apple watch on your iphone screen or your apple tv when you're doing the workout that is pretty cool because you can actually see your heart rate without having to glance at your apple watch everything is there on the screen another thing is quick actions which is the double pinch gesture you can use to control the apple watch there are more things you can do with the double pinch gesture now. Fourthly, there is new cross device functionality where you can remotely control the Apple Watch from another device. The QWERTY keyboard, which is only available at the moment on the Apple Watch Series 7, now adds support for extra languages, including French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, and Spanish. I know I'll be upgrading to the new watch OS as soon as it comes out. I really wanna test how it works in practice. If you wanna see that video, be sure not to miss out and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts on watch OS 9. I'd love to hear it.